Hello, everyone. Welcome to Faith with Love Fellowship, our midweek Bible study. We call it the Hour of Power. And it's not to uh, just come up with a cliche name or something that's, uh, you know, sounds cool. Any time we spend with the Lord Jesus is powerful. Amen. It's life transforming. So I bless you for uh, joining us uh, tonight and uh, to uh, hunger and thirst uh, for after righteousness. And, and righteousness is a person whose name is Jesus. Amen. So we hunger and thirst for Jesus and we love to spend time with him. And uh, we uh, love to spend time in his, in his word. Hallelujah. He's given us, as we're going to read tonight, great and precious promises. They belong to us. And uh, we're going to uh, learn tonight uh, some things about uh, learning to walk in them, being established, rooted and grounded in them. Amen. Uh, and so let's pray and let's begin. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence tonight. And we thank you for your holy word. And you are revealed in your word. Your will is revealed. Your character, your nature, your desire, all revealed through this word. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher and our guide. Holy Spirit, we invite you to humbly ask you to minister life to us, teach us, uh, reveal Jesus to us, uh, enlighten our eyes as we approach your word. And we thank you that um, we will be doers and not just forgetful hearers in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Welcome. All right, we are in 2 Peter. We are starting a new book tonight, uh, the book of 2 Peter. And uh, if you would turn there to chapter 1, uh, I will read it from the King James. But I just want to make mention as I took a look in the um, NIV that there are four headings, I believe, in the book of 2 Peter. And I thought it was uh, a good thing to remind you of these four headings. Uh, they'll help you as we study out this portion of scripture. Um, it is just as the name applies, it is his second letter. Uh, and he is um, a very, uh, not stern, maybe that's not the good word, but he's very sober and he's very um, aware of the presence of God and his responsibility to feed the sheep, amen. It was Peter that Jesus manifested to and said, do you love me? And he said, feed my sheep. So Peter is, is very, very uh, focused on feeding the sheep of God, amen. Uh, back in his day, his ministry was mostly to Jews, not entirely, but mostly to Jewish people who had come to salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, and and because of that, he was he was feeding them, and he was he was making sure that he was serving up plenty of meat. Amen. Uh, uh, he encourages them to to desire the sincere milk of the word, but at the same time, he's covering some very uh, uh, mature, very important details. And Second Peter is exactly the same. He moves on, and he's 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 really driving home these points. And again, in the NIV, the first heading uh, from chapter 1, verse 3 uh, to verse 10 is make one's calling and election sure. So how important it is that we make our calling and election sure. Number two, he, uh, he mentions from verse 12 to, I believe, the end of the chapter, uh, the prophecy of Scripture, the uh, the the. the uh, supremacy of the Word of God. Amen? That uh, that there are prophets and there are prophecies and, and there are angel visitations and there are tra trances and all kinds of things that Christian people experience and they're all good. Don't get me wrong. God does speak to His people that way but the number one priority, the most perfect of all is the Word of God. And Peter is going to remind uh, his his the people who are listening, us included, on on how supreme the Word of God is, and uh, how we cannot lose sight of that. Um, you know, there are many voices in the world, and and uh, the Bible says none without significance. And it's uh, you know people believe what they believe, 
and then they get around other people and and those people put up a good argument and so they start to believe what they believe because you know hey it makes sense and 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 we as christians have to guard our hearts from those things really because the, nobody has that authority uh, to change our belief system, you know, except the Lord Jesus and the Word of God. The third heading, chapter 2, is false teachers and their destruction. I thought that was interesting that we, we see that this is a whole chapter. Chapter 2 of uh, 2 Peter chapter 2 is devoted to false teachers and their destruction. And, and so, and we're going to go into it, take our time, but uh, it's important that we understand false teaching, and if we listen to it and we involve ourselves in it, it will bring destruction. And so we have to guard our hearts. Again, it's the supremacy of the Word of God, and to guard ourselves from false teachers and their destruction, regardless of how how right it sounds, regardless of of how it uh, how it's presented in such a way, regardless of no disrespect, how many titles are after a person's name, uh, it, it can never carry the weight of the Word of God. And we have to guard our hearts from it. And, and if um, the Apostle Peter is focusing on this to this early church that he's speaking to, how much more do we have to pay attention to it, right? And then um, uh, chapter 3 is, speaks of the day of the Lord. And uh, it's uh, talking about the, 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 the day of the Lord and the return of the Lord. So just thought that would be good for you to um, be able to get an overview get a little bit of an overview of that book, okay? Um, the uh, book of Second Peter chapter 1. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's us that are here tonight. And, and I believe that's you that are out watching. Maybe not everyone, because I don't know. We, we get reports of people that are watching from Europe and from the Scandinavian countries. And so what an honor and what a blessing. Amen. Uh, so we have no idea how far this, this live stream is going. And uh, we can't just assume that everyone that we're talking to is a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, uh, based on the Word of God, not necessarily based on what people think, okay? Just to belong to a church doesn't mean that you are a Christian. Jesus said, depart from me, I never knew you. So our task in life is not only to fulfill religious obligations and go through the motions, though disrespect intended is, but to know Him. It is to, is to walk with Him and to know Him and, and to be known of Him. Amen. To open ourselves up and let him in. The Bible says he stands at the door. Remember Revelation and knocks and he's knocking on the hearts of believers. He's saying, don't leave me out. Bring me in. Amen. So uh, here he goes on. He says uh, to them, right, that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So it's written specifically, again, mostly to Jews because that was Peter's ministry, but these are believing Jews that have come from the, the way of, of Judaism, and though they have not changed their nationality, they have their faith is now in the, the Messiah, the promised one, the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and they're growing in the knowledge of him. Verse 2, he says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So how is grace and peace multiplied to you? Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. That's how grace and peace is multiplied. Amen? Amen. Verse 3, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So again, he says that he has given to us all that pertains to life and godliness, and it comes through the knowledge of him. No matter what, we don't want to get away from it. We certainly don't want to get away from it. But you can't get away from it. The way that you're transformed is by spending time with Jesus. The way that you are uh, grace and peace is multiplied in your life is by spending time with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Uh, the way it says here, uh, your, your righteousness 
amen, uh, is, is, is fulfilled and, and, and comes from inside out when you're spending time with Jesus. Nothing else will do. And uh, so uh, loving him and worshiping him and, and, and allowing him access to your life, Hallelujah. And, and one of the things that I have found is always be thankful. Just live a, a, a life of appreciation. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Your presence to me is like, like nothing I, can, I don't have words for. The, the Bible says it's like a living water. Amen. It's, it's the bread of life. Hallelujah. I, I can't exist uh, without, your, without the bread that you bring. Remember when he, he, even some people decided to abandon him, remember? Jesus turned and said to his disciples, are you going to abandon me too? And they said to him, you, who else has the words of life? You alone have the words of life. Amen. Amen. And so we, that, that should be our, our heart. We should always maintain that. Uh, because as I said, there are a lot of other uh, voices out there. There are a lot of other influences uh, vying for your attention. And... Um, and they're not all bad necessarily. Uh, you know, sometimes we, we have our antenna, so to speak, up and we recognize bad things, we recognize demonic things, we recognize uh, error, but at the same time, not everything that's good is God. Amen? Now, God is good, don't get me wrong, but not everything that's good is God. And so we, we must uh, maintain the sovereignty of His Word. Hallelujah. And, uh, and then he goes on and he says here, uh, verse 4, uh, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. Amen. Now let me go back for a moment because I read something I liked. I read something here that I thought was, was worth sharing with you, if I can find it again. In this portion of scripture, verse 4, verse 3 says, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him, who called us by his own glory and goodness. Verse four, through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Amen. Not only has he given us all that pertains to life and godliness, but by using them, by walking in them, by, by desiring them, they're able to keep you away from the evil influences around us and to be able to distinguish between what is wrong and what is right, but not only what is good, but what is God. Hallelujah. So uh, the, 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 he's given us these promises and, and the, the word of God doesn't mince words when it speaks. It doesn't say it's, a, it's, it's, um, it, it's automatic. You with me? It says that you might. And there are many times in the word of God, it, it's a, what is that, five letter? My G-H-T, five letter. Because um, I had told you there's another word in the Bible that's a very powerful word and it's a three letter word called L-E-T, let. Well might is a five letter word, means very much a similar, in other words it's available God wants you to have it but you've got to apply yourself so that you can walk in it. And the same thing, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. It's a choice that we make. Don't be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen? That you might be able to, in your own experience, know what is the, the good will, the, the, the good, the perfect, and the excellent plan of God, the will of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, he says, verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So not only are these promises amazing promises for, 
for protection and for salvation and for healing and for deliverance and prosperity and blessing and kindness and goodness, all these, but they also have, a, have another role and that role is of protection and security uh, because again, the world is is out there, and and influences are, are all around us, and and uh, he has given us these precious promises that we have a, that we can escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Uh, verse five, and beside this, giving how much diligence? All diligence. You see what I mean by Peter? This is a very s s sober. This, this is this is this is meat we're talking about here, uh, and and he's letting the and he's feeding the sheep, because he 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 warns us and you know that you're going to have to be diligent about this, um, and and but the but the value the benefit of this diligence is is uh, will affect every area of your life, amen. amen. So he says, uh, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And to virtue knowledge, virtue, you know, the, the woman touched him and power flowed out of him. Amen. Virtue has been, they call it whatever they call it. I don't know what they call virtue. Uh, but virtue is, is a purity, an honesty, a sincerity. But uh, when the woman touched Jesus, that's what flowed out of him. It, it, purity. Amen. Pure, pure healing. Pure love. Pure, pure power flowed out of him and touched him. Her. And it was so pure and so powerful that it, it brought about complete healing and restoration for a at least 12 year long plague that this woman was suffering. Uh, and so uh, here, uh, that's what he's saying, that we, by these promises, we can be partakers of this, of this uh, uh, inheritance. Amen. Hallelujah this nature, so to speak. So beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Now listen, verse 8, for if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he, he wants us to apply ourselves to this, to knowing him. Amen. There, I don't have time now, and, and, and there are so many scriptures that talk about it, but that he's the pearl of great price. And we're told in the word of God that if a person finds a pearl, they'll go sell everything they have to buy that pearl. And if a person finds gold on a piece of property, they'll go out and they'll sell everything they have to buy that property because they consider that gold precious and valuable or that pearl. And so the Lord Jesus, the Bible says, more to be desired than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. So God wants to be desired. He wants to be valued because the truth of the matter is he is beyond compare. He is more precious. He is more beautiful. He is perfect in all of his ways. He is lovely and righteous altogether. Amen. And so he, he not only does he ask to be desired, but he, he deserves to be desired. Amen. Hallelujah. So he tells us, um, beside this, giving all diligence, verse 5, add to your faith virtue. So faith is, you know, kind of the starting point, and we're each given a measure of faith. But as we spend time in the Word of God, our faith develops. We become immovable. We become convinced and fully persuaded that what God has promised, God will do. Hallelujah. But then there's these things that we need to add to faith. But, you know, I have heard the faith message pretty much all my uh, life, you know, born again. And, and it's, it's amazing and wonderful and, and grateful. But, uh, and I've known this, my teachers used to say this as well, but uh, that's not the end all. Faith is not, the, that's all, you need much more than faith. And here it says, add to your faith virtue. A purity, a, 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 an honesty, an integrity, hallelujah. Uh, and, to, and, and it says, and to virtue, knowledge. 
Amen. And to knowledge temperance. Temperance is 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 is, is you know you walk the line. You, you it, it's like a stability in your life. Temperance is it, it holds fast. I never forget uh, Brother Copeland shared on the power trends. Remember, um, Hallelujah. Faith and patience. Through faith and patience, we we inherit the promises of God. Amen. And and he says, you know, come on, faith. Come on, patience. And and, and I remember someone talked about, you know, faith is 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 going up the hill. And, and sometimes the, it's a difficult walk and, and we start to get weary and, and it says don't get weary but we start to get weary and it's, and it's hard and, and it seems like there's no end in sight and we're, we're grinding, we're walking up the hill and, and it's almost to the point where your faith is about to fail and all of a sudden patience who's been walking with you all along comes up alongside and says come on faith get on my back let's do this, let's get over the top and so you know through faith and patience and, and so that's why the Lord is add to your faith virtue knowledge uh, temperance hallelujah and to temperance patience praise God and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity hallelujah so it's almost like a you know they, they get progressively closer to to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ amen Hallelujah, because he operated in all of these things. And, uh, and charity is love in action. Charity is not just words. Charity is love in action. Sometimes there are no words that need to be spoken. It's just, it's just uh, shown. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. So, uh, so anyway, uh, then notice verse 8. He says, for if these things be in you. Now, does God want them to be in you? Yes. But we have to make the decision. Amen? Amen? For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if these things are in you and abound, you will be fruitful. Amen? Amen. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, you will be fruitful in every area of your life. You'll be fruitful socially, fruitfully mentally, fruitfully intellectually, fruitful spiritually, fruitful physically. Amen? Every area. You'll be fruitful. Hallelujah. Nothing else offers this. No, no one else offers this. It can't be found anywhere else. And people strive for it. They, you know, they study for so many years to try to, to discover it and, and, and others sacrifice, you know, uh, so that they can possibly earn it. And, and it doesn't come that way. It comes through the knowledge of him. When he becomes so important to you that you'll seek him in the morning, where you'll where you'll love him and worship him and 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 and, and, and be be uh, be uh, mindful of him, how you live your life and how you think and how you how you act and how you react and 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 and, and your day is it your day or is it his day kind of a thing you know uh, that these are things that you, you we grow into so we add to uh, our faith these things right yeah. amen now notice the, we love the word of God don't you love the word of God I do I love the word of God yeah. and one of the things I love about it is what's going to come next he gives us that you might amen and it's it's so rich so wonderful that you 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 have to desire you have to do the work but then he'll tell us in verse um, 9 he says but he or she that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wow. You know, it's sandwiched right in the middle of there, but he's telling you the truth. There is a warning here. Right? Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of people, when, when we got born again, man, we were just on fire. I, I remember uh, that when I got born again, uh, I was, uh, for me, it was in my bedroom. 
in my own house, but I didn't know really the details. I didn't grow up in a in a church that really talked about salvation. But I called upon the Lord Jesus in my bedroom myself personally, and and I believe He heard me and He came into my heart. And it wasn't until later that I went at the request of some folks that came to my house. I told you I went to a, a meeting, and there the the minister was an evangelist and shared the gospel and and said if you would like to receive Jesus into your heart, you need to come forward and we will pray for you to receive Jesus. And I said, you know, yeah, I, I want that. And I moved forward. And, and when I came out of there, I told you, it could have affected me a couple different ways. There was a group of people in the back. They were in the last pew. This church was really long. Uh, young people my age were in the back on the right hand side and the church was empty except for that group of, pe of, of young people and as I came walking out after I was prayed for and I was you know so I was just I was just filled with God I was just overwhelmed it was beautiful it was wonderful and I was, I was walking out one of the fellows looked at me and he says to me look at that young man walking taller than he is tall and it blessed me so much because that he, he put words to how I was feeling. I felt like, man, I'm floating. I'm just, you know, I was really so filled with God. It was wonderful. And I tell people all the time, they had the ability to either send me in the right direction or to, or to cut me deep. And, and I'm proud of them that they made that decision. Amen. And we have to guard our hearts always be that way. We don't want to be critical towards people or judgmental. They could have said something and it would have just deflated me. And, but they didn't, they made a good choice. And then I went out to eat. The next night I, I, I met a fellow who was later on led me to the Bible study. And you know, it's just this, how God directs your steps. And, and he says to me after the meeting the next night, um, he says to me, would you like to go to a diner and get some food? And I says, yeah, sounds good. And so we went to a diner and we sat down, we ordered the, the waitress brought our food and we never touched it. We were just talking about how this is amazing. I never knew these things. And he was he was in the word of God longer. And so he was sharing some things. And, and then he said, if you like this, you've got to come to church with me on Sunday and introduce me to the other box. Back when they were at uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University. And I was like, wow, I went there. And they, you know, you get your Bible. And he says, okay, turn to First Peter. Boom, everybody in the whole building. And me, a First Peter, where in the world is what's, for, what's a First Peter? And I told you, I learned there's a table of contents in the beginning and you learn and you apply yourself to it. And, and the word of God has been so rich through the years. And it's not the only time because there were times where I'd go to Redeeming Love and I would be with, uh, you know, back in the day when Miss Vanessa and Joe and her twin sister and her, her husband at the time, I mean, we were all friends. And, uh, and, and her husband's brother, a uh, sister, we're still friends with them, all of them. But we would go to a diner, about six of us. And again, we'd order. And I must think to myself, why are we ordering? I mean, you can't just sit there. you got to order something. But we would just talk about the Word of God and we were just, you know, to encourage one another, amen? And, and it almost couldn't wait till the next week. We're so fired up. And it was like wonderful. And if Redeeming Love back in the day, it was a trailer at Fairleigh Dickinson University. It was a freestanding trailer, like probably came on wheels. Uh, but there were two and they, they had the downstairs and upstairs. It was, it was nice, whatever. But I remember many times, and we dressed real fancy back in those days. And, and um, you know, some of the men would come matching socks Shoes, you know, matched the socks, matched the, the thing in their in their suit coat pocket, you know, and all the rest of it. And the ladies come all done up. And I mean, the parking lot was muddy and we didn't care. We wait outside, wait for the first service. The people leave. We're waiting outside, just talking. Couldn't wait to get in the building. And as soon as the service is over, I would go right down and get my cassette of the service and put that in my cassette deck and listen to it, flip it over and over. And I mean, we have to maintain that. What happens sometimes is we get cold and we just, it, it's not as, as, as pure, it's not as desirous and before long, you see? And that's what the Word of God tells us. It says that we have to be, be aware of these things. He says, um, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. 
So we, we, it's up to us to maintain that, that, that joy, that excitement about the things of God. Amen. And, and, and you know as well as I do how a person comes to the presence of God determines how they leave. So if you come not expecting anything, then you probably won't get anything. But if you come expecting to hear uh, words that are going to bring comfort and strength and wisdom, answer questions and, 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 and help you and strengthen you and establish you, then God's going to, going to meet your need. Amen. It's, it's whatever we expect. Uh, and, and whatever we put into it, if we put nothing into it, you know, the old expression, you get nothing out of it. And so here he's warning us saying, don't be don't don't fall into this trap. Right. He that lacks these things, if we're not aggressively obeying the word of God, then we're actually regressing. He says he is blind and he cannot see afar off and I've forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Verse 10, wherefore the rather, in other words, don't do that, you know, don't do it, do not do it, that's what the Bible says, right, don't, don't let your heart be troubled, don't do it, amen, and anything else it says, you know, give the devil no place, don't give him any place, so this is, these are not suggestions, these are, this is the authority of the word of God, amen, because if we give the devil place, what's he going to do? He's going to kill, steal, destroy. Amen. So we can't give him place. And he's going to bring confusion. And he's going to try to get into our mind and, and you know, and, and give us, you know, varying opinions. Well, well, I know that's what the word of God says, but well, same trick that he tried in, in the garden. But it worked there. Mm -hmm. But you have to make sure it doesn't work in, in your garden. Amen. 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 In your life, in your heart. So anyway, he continues and he says here, um, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, brothers, sisters, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Give diligence to make your calling and election. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let me. He's not necessarily taught. He could be talking about specific callings, okay? Because some are called to, you know, uh, fivefold ministry. Some are called to help. Some are called to uh, hospitality. Some are called to generosity. It's lots of different callings, amen, giftings and things like that. But I believe in this particular case, the focus is the calling and the election is the to, to, to be always aware that you have been forgiven. You have been, you're, you, you're saved. You have been purged from your sins. That sin no longer has a sway over your life or dominion over your life. You have been delivered out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of the son of his love. And these things are alive in you and, and my, you're mindful of it and, and, and appreciative of it. And you walking in the light of it. You're with me, my brothers and sisters. So here it says here, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. If, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So is it worth the work? Absolutely. We, we heard the word diligence at least twice, maybe three times. In other words, like it. You know, that this is something that we need to give attention to that we need to that we need to give priority to in our life amen there are uh, there's there's nothing that is worth more isn't that a song there's nothing worth more amen yeah that's a song i think we sing it i don't remember but uh we gotta have to find that one we gotta listen to the tape again there's nothing worth more i don't remember but it's a good song so hallelujah. So notice it goes on and it says here, uh, verse 12, wherefore, and don't you love this about Peter? Hallelujah. Wherefore, because it reveals his heart. Amen. He, he took the words of Jesus very seriously. Very, it, it rocked his world. When Jesus uh, came to him and said, Peter, do you love me? 
And Peter, who knows what he was expecting? He denied Jesus three times. And the third time with cursing. And, and here comes Jesus. And, and he'd gone back to fishing. And, and Jesus comes and doesn't bring up what Peter did. He comes, he feeds him. And then he shows kindness and mercy to him. And then he reiterates the calling on his life. He says, now, Peter, do you love me? And he says, oh, yes, I love you. Feed my sheep. And Jesus did it three times, you know? Feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Joe Crawford always reminds me, sheep are, ma are adults, so are sheep are adults, lambs are children. We need to feed our adults and our children. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you know, he took it, he, those words resound in Peter. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. It resounds in him. Amen? So this is what he's doing. And he says here, verse 12, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Yet I think it meet or necessary, as long as I am in this tabernacle, this body, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. So he's going to remind you, he's going to remind you, he's going to bring it back around again, he's going to bring it in other words, he's going to show it come around the other side, he's going to present it again, because as far as the Lord is concerned, because Peter is being led by the Spirit, amen? So what Peter is saying is the word of the Lord God, amen? The Lord Jesus. So if Peter is saying it, Jesus is saying it, amen? And if Jesus is saying it, it's from heaven. God is saying it. Amen. And so he's, he's saying, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you in, always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Now, he wasn't being facetious. I don't believe he was being facetious. Uh, there's nothing about God that's facetious. But at the same time, how many know we're people? And, and sometimes it says, you know, though you know them. And sometimes we think, well, I know. But do you really? You with me? Yeah. Oh, I know. Well, do you really? Are you, can you be talked out of it? Uh, I guess it depends on who's doing the talking. And it depends on who's around. You with me? Yeah. We, we can't, that's not, that's not what he's talking about. Are you listening? We have to be fully persuaded. We have to make sure our calling and our election is sure. We don't change because of the people around us. We don't change because of the waves of doctrine, by the, by the things that come down the pike, by somebody who says they have a, you know, this is, the, this is the greatest apostle. You know, if everybody on the planet were to say this apostle is the, is the most supreme apostle on the planet right now, and they say something that doesn't line up with the word of God, they're wrong. Amen. But it's not always obvious. Are you listening? But you need to know. We need to know. That's why he says diligent. Apply yourself diligently to it. Amen. Uh, I, I uh, have can say some more things along those lines, but I, I don't want to because uh, he, Peter does a wonderful job. So um, where are we? Let's see. Um, stir you up. Put your remembrance. All right. Verse 14. Knowing, and he knows in his heart because he's received revelation from the Lord Jesus. He says, knowing that shortly I must put off this tabernacle, my body, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. So he, he knew that his time was coming to an end. And even all the more, he's going to, while there's breath in him, he's going he's gonna to confront people with the truth of the gospel for their benefit, for their own benefit. Amen. He, he, he's no longer Peter, uh, the wishy-washy one. The unsteady one. He, he has become the one that Jesus said, you are the rock. Yeah. Built on me, because I am the rock. Are you with me? And Peter became that rock, small r, who has, who has based his life on, on the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Yeah. Amen? He, he's no longer uh, just a fisherman anymore. 
He, he's, he's now a fisher of men. Are you listening? And he, he knows his calling and his election. And he's just letting us know, knowing verse 14, that shortly I must put off this, my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. In other words, mark my words, you're going to hear my voice. It's going to ring in your heart. It's going to, words are going to come back. You're going to hear my voice saying, I told you this before, but there's something that's very, very important. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He says, verse 16, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Listen. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mountain. Amen? Amen. This is Peter talking. He says, I was there. So I'm not telling you, you know, something that I heard and, you know, a fable that I read. You know, let me tell you what I read on Facebook, you know, and, and, and it's all made up. And, you know, there's been all kinds of things, you know, something. Oh, they put something out and it says that something just happened. And then you read later on, it's come around and it's come around and it's been out there before and the same old thing. And, you know, it, it's that kind of a thing. He says, no, I'm not talking about fables. I'm not talking about stories. I'm telling you as an eyewitness, I was there. I heard the voice. Amen. I saw the presence of God manifest. I saw the miracles. Praise God forever. So he goes on here. Now, again, I told you this portion is reminding us about the absolute supremacy of the word of God. Amen. He says here, um, Verse 16 again, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. I'm so sorry, I interject. Peter was there at the transfiguration of the Lord Jesus, remember? Peter was there. Hallelujah. So he talks about, for, we, he, for he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You know, I love that. Uh, it talks about, and we also have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well. That's an admonition. Amen. You do well. In other words, make this a priority. You do well that you take heed. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. We have a light. Amen. That shines in the dark. Darkness is all around us, but we have a light. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it says here, as unto a light that shineth in the dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in our hearts. The day star is one of the names of the Lord Jesus. He's the day star. He's the bright and morning star. Amen. Here in, in, uh, in, on this planet, most navigation, uh, even some time keeping is based on the North Star. There's, most uh, will say that the North Star s stays in the same place all the time. You know, I don't know if that's true, but that's representative of Jesus's. Everything is based on him. Time and space, navigation, you can count on him being stable. Amen? 
hallelujah. Uh, compasses, I mean, so much uh, operate off of off of these things. And and here it says that the that the uh, uh, day star arise in your hearts. Praise God. Verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. In other words, no one has a right to add their spin to the word of God. And yet people will try. It happens all around us. People have agendas. And they're not necessarily bad agendas, but they have agendas. And they're going to present their agenda as being right. How many know people who are completely wrong? who are completely out of it. You think to yourself, how could you be so messed up? They think they're right. They're convinced that they're right. And there's no talking to them because as far as they're concerned, you're wrong. And this is what the Word of God is warning against. Amen? That there is a supreme measure. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God. And it holds everything together and it's faithful and he's true and he's altogether righteous and you can base your life and your goings and your comings and your, your todays, your tomorrows, your eternity, all on him. Yeah, amen. And we as Christians have to guard our hearts that we don't allow any of these other things to come into our lives. And, and, you know, uh, I, I, it's, it's just an observation that I've seen through so many years when I talk to people. As far as they're concerned, I think to myself, how can they, you know, believe that? But as far as they're concerned, they're right. I had a conversation once with a pastor friend of mine. He believed in, in the sovereignty of God in the respect where God chose who would be saved and who would not be saved. And his name is Andy, I don't mind saying. And um, and so, not, not not this Andy, not the Andy you know, who's a pastor from up on the mountain back in many, many years ago. Uh, when 9-11 happened, he was deported back to Canada. That's where he came from. And good brother, a good man of God. And he was very set in his in his theology. And uh, doctrine, yeah. And, um, and so we happened to have lunch at Glenwood Baptist Church. And we came out from the church and we're standing on the hill looking down and cars were going by. And I says to him, now, Andy, tell me, according to what you're telling me, that as this car goes by, you mean to say God is saying that the driver, the man in the driver's seat, he wants to be saved, but the woman next to him, no. And the child in the back, yes, but the other child, no. And that other child, no. That God is picking and choosing who's going to be saved and who's not. And he kind of looked at me funny. And I says, because the word of God says that God wills all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That's right. And he kind of looked at me for a minute. And, and he says to me, you know, I never saw that before. I never thought of that before. Wherever he went to school, that's what they told him. So he was basically parroting what they told him. And it had formed a belief system. But when I showed him, and not boasting in myself, but when I showed him the word of God and really put the, put the light on the nature and the character of God, he saw it. And he says, no, I, I, boy, thank you, he said to me. And I, I you know, thank God. I, I just thank God it came, you know, God loves you enough that he wants to help you. Because you certainly want to preach that from your pulpit, Amen. right? And, uh, and so, you know, God wills everybody to be saved. Now, will everybody in that car be saved? Yes, if they want it, if they choose to. If they hear the gospel and they value it enough to allow it to be a part of their life, amen? That's why the Bible says those three kids, say those three kids in the back seat, they, they need to hear the gospel presented. You can't, the parents can't say, oh, when they're older, they'll, 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 no, 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 no. The Bible says train up a child in the way they should go. They need to know, they need to hear, they need to know. They need to see it live before them. And so, you know, it is God's will that everybody in the car gets saved, but they have, how many know they have a part to play? Amen. And, and so, um, hallelujah. And that's not a, a contradiction. It, it's just letting us know that we have a part in this. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. 
So it's open to who, whosoever will. Amen. For God so loved the world, everybody, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. And so thank God for that and for the for the blessing of that. So uh, so we have uh, this portion of scripture. We'll pick up chapter two a little bit. We'll get into it. Um, so notice verse 20 again, chapter one, knowing this first. Knowing this first priority, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. We have no right to change it to suit our way of thinking or our way of living, especially if those things are wrong. Amen. It says verse 21, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And, and you know, and if you want to know, you know, some of the characteristics of people who were, um, qual who became qualified or qualified themselves, uh, you take a look in the book of Acts of those who were called to serve tables. And it said the deacons, so to speak, and it lays down very strict guidelines. They had to be honest. They had to have their, their homes in order. They had to love their wives and, and their wives love and adore them. And, and they, were, they were hungry for the word of God. And they were men that, that were apt to pray. And they were apt to teach. And, and they were stable. Are you with me? And, and, and that, those are the qualifications so that they can wait on tables in the church. So those are the similar qualifications that God's not just going to hand knowledge of him to anybody. You're going to have to pay the price. You're going to have to do what's necessary in his sight. Amen. And when we but when we make that decision, when we when we do what is necessary to be right and to live right and to all the rest of it, it says here that uh, that God's blessing. Amen. Will always be upon us and will bring will bring freedom and, and deliverance. And we'll just walk in it and, and we'll never fall. We'll never fail. Amen. So chapter two. I said the heading of this one is false teachers and the destruction that they bring. So there's a, a very stern warning over this. It says here, chapter two, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. In other words, privately, hidden, covered, not readily seen, you know? who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, <clears throat> and bring upon themselves swift destruction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me a second. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate that. Nice cup of warm tea. So it says here, I mean, is, is Peter... This is, this is serious, isn't it? This is very, this is serious. He says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And only a few will follow them. Know what's it say? And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So whoever the leader, you know, is not faithfully bringing the word of God by the spirit of God. They're drawn away, the Bible says, by their own lusts. He says, we are drawn away by our own lusts, right? Mm -hmm. And then it goes on, it says here, now is, is this, you know, well, just a, they have a little bit of a different opinion. Is that what it says? No, it says damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. 
And though, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words, it's fake, phony, you know, not from the heart. Sometimes people tell you what they know you want to hear. It's not them talking. They basically just, well, they know how you, how you feel about certain things. So they're going to, you know, put on a show. Fake, phony, stinky. Are you with me? See, the Word of God is he's helping us, isn't he? Helping us. And it says here, and through covetousness, covetousness sh shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Ooh. In other words, make merchandise of you. What they can get out of you. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So it's, it's they're diligent. Amen? But in the wrong direction. And verse 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivereth them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spareth not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Verse 11, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots are they, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happening excuse me, but it has, it has happened unto them according to the truth proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So it's brutal, isn't it? Very brutal. One thing I want you to notice, he's talking about Christians. He's not talking about ungodly 
you know, heathen or whatever you want to call it, people who don't know. It's all about Christians. And so this behavior, this whole chapter, chapter two, you know, it's talking about Christians. And, and we have to, you know, basically Christians who have forsaken chapter one, who, who haven't taken the, the, the admonitions of chapter one to heart. And, and this is the end, this is the end result. Amen? Amen. And we have to guard our hearts. We, we can't judge, but we need to be wise. We need to be aware, realize that not everything that's good is God. Amen? Amen. And, 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 and uh, not everything that people say is right is God. Yeah. You with me? Because people's perspective of right this is as varied as, you know, the flowers. What you say is right, not necessarily what he says is right or what she says is right. Or, come on. But the Word of God is right. And the Lord Jesus is righteous altogether. Hallelujah. Amen. So, hallelujah. Heed uh, diligently to chapter 1 so that you can enjoy, uh, avoid chapter 2. Amen? Amen. And, and spend a little time in chapter 2 just to guard your hearts. Not be afraid of anybody. You don't want to be afraid of every, anybody. But um, not everybody has a, has a pure agenda. Not everybody has clean hands and a clean heart. And I'm not saying, you know, be a devil chaser and, you know, everybody's got a demon. Because, you know, Brother Hagin used to say, and I, I love that, he says, stay in the middle of the road. Don't go off the ditch on one side, which means you're so naive that, you know, you just believe everybody. Oh, you're a Christian? Oh, praise God. Why don't you come to my house and, and you know, I'll leave you alone with my children. <laughs> you know, come on. I don't mean to be, but come on. That's the ditch, right? But the ditch on the other side is I don't trust anybody. They're all, every one of them has got an ulterior. No, no, no. Stay in the middle of the road, you know. Don't trust your children with many people, right? But at the same time, not everybody is, is the devil. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Just focus on chapter one. Amen. And, and purpose in your heart to, to, to love him, spend time with him, and, uh, and spend time in his word, and add to your faith virtue and temperance, amen, patience, and, and these things, and, and, and just keep on pressing into him, growing in your relationship with him, knowing him, let him letting him know you. And, you know, he's faithful. Hallelujah, he's your Lord. And if Peter took it seriously when Jesus said to him, feed my sheep, how many know Jesus took it seriously when you asked him to become your Savior and the Lord of your life? Amen? So when you're spending time with him and you learn to hear his voice, if you're in a situation that you don't see that there's a problem, he'll let you know. Because he says, my sheep hear my voice. And we're, we, 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 we're led by the Spirit of God. Amen? And though it may not seem a problem in our heart, we know, no, 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 put the brakes on, stop. Amen? Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? I appreciate you so much. So thankful for these times that we're able to spend together. So uh, next week, chapter uh, three, and uh, we'll probably finish out the chapter, Lord willing. And then we start uh, the small books, the epistles to uh, John 1, 2, and 3. And then uh, we'll get into uh, Jude. And then finally, we'll get into the book of Revelation. And we'll see where we'll go from there. Okay, Father, we love you so much. We thank you for time spent together with you. They are so precious to us. They are so worthwhile. And um, we're so grateful that you have begun a good work in us, are completing that work that you are establishing us, that you are, uh, that you are encouraging us, that you are sustaining us. And uh, Lord, we love you for it. We bless you. We thank you. We have no fear. We've been, perfect love casts out fear. We're not afraid because we have you and you lead us, you guide us, always cause us to have victory, triumph always. And uh, we just surround uh, our brothers and sisters here and out watching Father with faith in the name of Jesus. And uh, thank you that um, that we will love you, that we'll walk in your ways, and uh, and we will be blessed in, in every area of our life. We, we thank you for that. As always, Lord, traveling mercies as we return to our homes. May our homes be blessed. 
May our sleeps be sweet. We thank you, praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out. We'll see you next time, okay? Good night.